Hello everyone, today we want to create a small application where we make use of the folding cell widget. First of all we go to the pub.lang.org page and type in folding cell. And here under the installing section we copy the folding cell dependencies and put it into our root project under pubspec.jaml. And here we can put it under our dependencies, which are here. And then we also copy the importment statement and create another widget, which is called ice cream widget. And here we paste this inside and get the dependencies and restart our application. And this importment statement here has this simple folding cell widget, which has different properties. And here we have three properties, the front widget, where we create another ice cream front widget. Then we also have an inner top widget where we just create an ice cream inside widget, which we will create later. And the last thing what we do is to set the inner bottom widget. And here we just say container and color and we set it to brown, which I will import here. So I have got this color already here inside. It's a mixture between white and brown. And we also need to set a cell size. And here we set the size and here we have to provide the width and the height. And we go here with the media query and here dot size dot width. So we get the whole width of the screen. And we also need to define here that the cell has a height of 125, for example. Now we need to create these widgets here. So we go here and create both of them. So we created both widgets here and then we will import it here. And it looks like here that we have a stateless widget and both of these widgets. First of all, we go to our ice cream inside widget and here we create a color of orange so that we can see what is happening here. And we also go to the other widget, the front widget, and here we set the color of brown. First of all, we need to import here some assets, some images. So I've created here a folder called images where I've put all the images we need for our application here. So we have ice cream bowls and also some cons here. Then we go to the front widget here and we make it here a stateful widget first of all. And here we want to pass some information. First of all, the ice cream. So we have here a name and an image which will be later shown. So we have an image of the ice cream and also the name of this ice cream. And we also want to pass how many ice bolts we have selected. So we will pass your ice bowl count. The next thing what we want to do is to create here a child where we create a list tile. And here we have two things. First of all, a leading property where we want to display the image which we get. And here we just go with widget dot ice cream and here we just say image and also set here box fit to cover. Let's see how this um, data representation looks like. Here we have a data class where we have all our ice creams and here we have the names of our ice cream and also the path to our image which is here. So we have here images, ice cream one, two and three. Back in our list tile, we also have another property which is called title. And here we simply create a text where we display our ice cream name and also we set it to a different kind of style. Here in our normal ice cream widget, which combines all the cell, and we create an ice cream. What we want to do is like to show multiple ice creams under each other. So we go here back to our main file. And here we create a list view so that we can show multiple widgets underneath. And here we just take the ice cream, which we will import here, which we get from our data. And we want to map our ice cream to this ice cream widget, which we created before. And here we just pass the ice cream property and make it to a list. And we need it to import it here and also delete this here, of course. And here again, this ice cream is the data property, which we saw before. So we will have here multiple ice creams and we map all over them and create every time an ice cream widget for every 
data we have here inside. Um, and here he complains because we need to set here also the ice cream which we passed here through from our main file. So we set it here and restart our application and then we got this ice cream here. Now this doesn't look right. First of all we want to create here another padding around our cell. So it will not fix this problem with our image but we want to have here a little padding also around. And to fix this here with the image we go to our ice cream front widget. And here we set a content padding of edge incest 016. And another thing we want to do is to create a little button here which we can select. So we go here and create another column and here we create a little bit spacing between our button and our um, text here on the right side. So we go here with height 8.0. We also set here the outline button and here we simply set a row where we set an icon and also a little bit spacing between this icon and the text and then the text add to cart. And we also set it here to main axis size min because if we don't do it, let's hot reload it, it will take the whole size here. So we have to set here the main axis size to min. And we also want to align this text here to the left. So we go here and say cross axis alignment, cross axis alignment start. And we also want to align it here to the center. So we go here main axis alignment and here we create center and then it is more centered right now. The next thing what we do we set here a little bit padding also so it looks more like this and we also set here an on pressed function so we just define here that our scaffold should show a snack bar and the snack bar is something which is shown up here at the bottom and we just say here that some ice cream bolts are added to the cart and we also can change here the color of our text so it is white instead of this dark color here which looks much better and with Control alt m we can make here a method for this so we create here build ice cream and make it here to widget and also convert to an expression body now we also want to show here some other information so we will go here with a stack and here we create another method which we call ice cream info and here we just display some more data. So we have here a column where we show the current ice ball count and also the price which we calculate here, which is not that important, but I mean, it's some additional information which looks pretty nice. And to make this work, we also need to add this ice ball count here, which is created here in our ice cream widget. And so we go to our ice cream widget, make it first of all stateful and then we set this property ice ball count and pass it here to our widget and if we hot restart it this should work so we have here the count of our bolts and also the price now we need to position this ice cream info correctly so we will just wrap it here into another widget which is called positioned and then we have here top where we just go with 16 and right where we go with 8 and if we reload it, it looks like this, much better. So let's go back how it looks like. So we have this front widget, which we created here with the ice ball count, the name of the ice cream, and also the con, and also button, which we can click here. If we tap here on this widget, it will fold around and will show both of these widgets here. Here is an inner bottom widget, which is this widget here in the brown color. And the other one is the inner top widget, which we just set to the orange accent. The next thing what we want to do is to change here this inside widget. And we also make it here to a stateful widget. And now here we want to have like a distinction between the ice bolts, how many we can select. So now we go here and create this variable select ball, which indicates how many bolts we selected. And we will want to select three bolts at maximum. So we have the ball count, which is the maximum of three. And here in our container, we just set here text to how many bolts you would like to select. And we also set here a width for our container so that we align it here to the left side. 
So if we set it here to double infinity, our text will take the whole width and then it will automatically align to the left side. And we also set it here a little bit margin to the left, so we have here a little bit margin. The next thing what we want to do is to create three buttons. So we go here and create a row. And here inside we want to generate a list where we just say we want to generate bolt count button. So we have here three buttons which we want to generate. And here we will just call another method which will create this widget. So we will call it ice bowl button. And we also need to change here the order so that there's no error. And here we want to create the buttons. So first of all, we want to return here a race button. And here we want to set an image. So we will pass here some additional information which we need. We need the context and index later and also the image. And here we just pass the context and set our image to images bolts and then the number of our image. So we go here with index plus one and we also set the index here which we get here when we generate this list and this index will help us later to recognize if our button is selected or not. Um, we hot restarted here right now and now it looks like this. So we have these three buttons here which are not selectable right now. First of all we want to add a little bit padding here. So I go here with vertical padding. Now we see here our property. So we have here a select bowl property, which means if it is one, then we have this button here selected. If it's two, then we have this button selected and three, then we have this button selected. So we will determine here if our button is selected. So if it's equals to our selected bowl property here, which is in our state, then it is selected. And if it's the case, we want to show our uh, button with a white opacity so that it looks more like selected. Otherwise, we want to show the normal button color. And we also need to set here an on press so that this button gets activated. And now we see that this here is in a kind of selected state because we set it here to different color when it is selected. Now we also need to change the selection when we click on a different button. And that's what we can do here. We just say that we set the state and then we set the selected ball to the current index. Now, if we hot reload, the button will change its color here and it will change the selected state. Now we also want to pass this information to our outer world, to our other widgets. Therefore, we create here another property on changed ice bolts, which has here a value changed function where we can pass an integer. So we will pass here how many bolts we selected and we go back here in our on pressed function and call this function. And here we just pass the index plus one. Another thing we want to add to our row is here a main axis alignment space around. So if you hot reload it, um, there's a little bit spacing around. And for our container, we set a little bit padding here. So we just add this padding and then it looks much better. So now we ended up here that we have these three buttons here which we can select. Now we want that this information here gets displayed here on the other widget. So if we for example press three then should also show three bolts and the price should get updated. Therefore we go back to our ice cream widget and here we just set the unchanged ice bolts method. And here we just get the ice bolts, how many we selected on this card. So we get how many we selected here to this variable. And then we just update here our state where we set the ice ball count. And this ice ball count is also set to our ice cream front widget. And if you hot reload our application and here we set, for example, two bolts, then we go back. This here is updated. And if we set here three bolts and go back, we have here three bolts and the updated price. And we can also have here multiple widgets open and it will automatically scroll in our list. So we don't have to care about it and everything works just fine. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up 
and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter and see you soon. Bye!